such a love bug. I love celebrating love. I think love is the point of our existence here on this planet in whatever form you are lucky enough to find it, have it, hold on to it, cherish it, and you know appreciate it and cultivate it. Um, but um, we have two people about to walk out here that I'm so admiring of. Um, she is in some of the biggest movies ever made, Avatar, Guardians of the Galaxy, Star Trek, and he is an award-winning artist, writer, and director. They're profoundly cool, they're profoundly in love, and they're just the most awesome people, and I'm so excited to have a conversation with them about their incredible, incredible, meaningful, extraordinary film that I had the privilege to watch and I can't wait to discuss. Please welcome Zoe Saldana and Marco Perego. Hi. We're yeah, so, that's we're okay. So, are you are kidding you me? We just we just welcomed a new. Did you kitten. just ask her if she's comfortable? Yes. Oh my oh. god. I need to. That is so <laughs> nice. I need. <laughs> what does that feel like to be cared for like that? Can I just ask? It feels lovely, I have to say. There were for many years when we first got married, it was hard for me to accept it. Because there's a part of us and women, you know, if our hearts have been broken before where we self-sabotage a lot. And yes um, to both, go yeah, on. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then one day you just wake up and you sort of go, oh, maybe this is real. Maybe he really means to ask me if I'm comfortable. So I should just say thank you, I am. Yeah, and, and <laughs> the next step is, um, the next step is asking him if he's comfortable. Are you comfortable? Super, thank okay. you. The question is, are you comfortable enough to nude bowl? Because we had a story in the news about people starting this nude bowling club. And I didn't know that the world needed that. Um, I wasn't aware we needed that many balls. So basically, I'm like, would you ever? We. I, I mean, who's to say we haven't already? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we do, guys. Like, we, 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 we do. We, I mean, when we're in Europe and, no, we do, and in the Caribbean, we sometimes we forget our bathing suits and we just we, go for like a swim. So, <laughs> but we've never balled. No, never. Okay. But we can try. We play Lego naked now. Oh God, yes. Yeah. So and he, he just found a way to. <laughs> to call sexy time like playing Legos naked. So then the boys, at least, you know, our older ones caught on and they were like, are you guys kissing? Are you guys gonna go play naked with your Legos? And we're like, no, we're not gonna do that. Okay, that is the cutest thing <laughs> ever. Because can you imagine like what it's like? I mean, and I'm, maybe I'm asking this to myself, but what it's like to grow up in that kind of love. It's so wonderful. It's true. I mean, it's not all lovey-dovey no, all the time. Sure. Sometimes there's like moments of like, Marco! <laughs> when, she, when she's speaking Spanish, I'm very scary. Yeah. I'm being very honest. <laughs> if she's speaking um, in English, I'm okay. I'm okay. But when she's speaking English and in Spanish, she called me, Marco Andrea, come here. I'm so freaking out. I don't know what. <laughs> How did you find each other? On a plane. Yeah, uh, six, uh, six, at six o'clock in the morning, yes. and it was like a Virgin America flight from Los Angeles to New York yeah. post Thanksgiving, and yeah, um, very close. yeah, and we and we just had a conversation, and then we realized that in a span of like three years prior to that, yeah, um, we kept bumping into each other, and it was always like, oh my God, there's that guy that really gorgeous Italian. Oh my God, don't ever talk to him. He's probably a player, <laughs> and and. Um, <laughs> And Marco was probably always like, oh, look at this beautiful actress. Let me try to make love to her. And if I don't, then let me try to sell her a painting. That's it. That's it. I, wasn't, I wasn't really friendly, no, you know? No, he was not friendly, but... How come? Was absolutely not friendly. And I, <laughs> and I, kid, I left my email to her best friends. And in the night, they sent me an email. said, do you want to go out? And I said, no, I really, I don't feel it. And she answered me, what, what? And I no, don't know what this means. Wah, wah. And, I know what this mean. and I don't know what this means. And I don't know what this means. Oh, yeah, lost and, in translation. Yeah, and I said, OK. All the time. Uh, and, and after, like a month after, she texts me and say, I'm, 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 do you want to, I come into your studio? And I say, yeah, I would love that. And she came down to the studio. And from that day, we never separate. Yeah. Oh. And then 
Wait, okay, so it's food. when you got engaged, I heard there was some spiciness there. Yes. Um, tell them, tell them. When you got engaged, I heard there was some spiciness there. Yes. Um, tell them, tell them. Can I? Tell them. Okay, I don't wanna, you know, Zoe is a little spicy. You know, it's no. Latino, a little. And I said to Zoe, I'm going to New York. I need to do something for work. And I actually went to Dominican Republic. Thanks to her stepfather and all the family who support me. And I went to the, to see, my father, it's my father. father's yeah. grave. And, and I asked him if you, if you can marry her. And he I, went to her father's grave in the Dominican Republic yes. and asked his permission. Yeah, but when I arrived back to London, she don't know that I went there. When she said, where have you been? And I say, I've been in a place, but you need to wait a couple of hours and I'll let you know. And she said, I, We're in a cab in London she in the middle of the traffic. Cab. I was like, wait, are you, get, you know what? I just got out of the yes. cab and I'm walking in the middle of the street and it was and just I very dramatic. And I ran her, very dramatic. <laughs> please, I need to say something to you. And she said, absolutely not. And I say, no, <laughs> but please, I need to say something to you. And uh, yes, I showed the video and, uh, and she said, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> the word that's coming to mind listening to you, Marco, and it's actually very important, I think, for the film, The Absence of Eden. Um, the film has so much depth. The way you are speaking, I keep thinking of our English word, tact. You have so much tact as a yes. human being. You possess so much grace. Thank and you. the film that you both have made together is a timeless and yet timely story. And it is made in this way where it's about immigration, it's also about law enforcement, and how and why did you want to tell this story this way? Because you do it, if I may say so, so perfectly. The truth is, um First, I'm an immigrant. My wife is first time generation Latina. I have three boys, two they look like Zoe, one look like me. I'm a diversity at the big aspect. Mm. And in 2016, I did a, an art piece. It was about- The shoes? The shoes, they losing, you know, they, 714 children, they lost life to go to Italy, to go to Syria, to Italy. Yes. And for a year, I was coming almost a father. I collecting a pair of shoes of children and full of concrete. And he went to this, you know, important museum called the Rennie, Rennie Museum in Vancouver. And I was asking myself, okay, but art is incredible, but film really can touch so many people. And I think I will try to experiment on other tools like that I can reach people. For me, it was not to give a, a preachy perspective, it was just about to try to create a question. And you don't, that's what's so incredible. A question. I just want to create a conversation the day after a breakfast. That's really what I want to do. I want people to start to be aware a little bit what's going on about humanity, because I think there is so much going on and everybody just talk about, but there is an aspect where I think we need to reflect ourselves in, in our own kitchen the day after you watching this film. And I really hope people go to the theater outside the incredible performance by Zoe and Garrett and yeah, Adria, yeah. but what I think it was incredible, but I really believe that they, we need to start to talk about more about humanity and then go deeper about that. And I really believe in that. Somehow the film really focuses on the human beings yeah. versus the constant need to argue about what is right and what is wrong. How did you handle that, again, with the tact that you did by leaving it, and I want to ask you about the ending because there is sort of a, almost like the problem itself or the epidemic itself, there is no end. And so there's this very gentle way out of the film that it seems like you don't dare to wrap it up because it cannot be wrapped up. Well, it's still ongoing. I mean, today, I would say a huge chunk of the news that we have, uh, not just in our country, but also across the globe is centered around immigration. And sometimes we're voting based on how we feel around immigration. And, and what we wanted to sort of add to the conversation is, is just a reminder, these are people. It is just one of those pieces of art that transcends and becomes a true understanding of the human experience.
on every single side and every angle. It's a masterpiece. I'm in awe of it, honestly. Thank you. Thank you I so really, much. I really, really am. We'll be right back.